fail, 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 fail. And after all my testing, here it is. This is the only method I have found that prevents borax from smearing and clean. So in a previous video, I talked about why I wasn't using borax with my laser engravings. And I got a ton of comments and suggestions on that video that were super helpful. So I want to say thank you to everyone for giving me your feedback and your input on things that I can try. So in this video, I've decided to test pretty much all of those suggestions that I was given in the previous video. Now, I need to point out, here is the criteria for the testing I'm doing. What I'm looking for is a method whereby I can use borax on a wood laser engraving that results in the wood being turned darker and not just creating a bunch of soot that wipes right off. Now that's a pretty tall order. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but I got a lot of comments. I got a lot of things to test. So we're gonna give it a try. Air assist. One of the first comments I got was that I need air assist on my laser. Now, originally I did this on my little cheap OCNC that I bought a laser module for. But since then I have upgraded and now I have an Ortor Laser Master 2 Pro, Laser Pro, whatever. I have an Ortor laser that I'm gonna use for my testing in this video. It's a 5.5 watt or 5,500 milliwatt diode laser. And I got the one that didn't come with air assist because I wasn't doing laser cutting. I'm doing engraving. And typically air assist doesn't make a huge difference on engraving, at least not that I've noticed. In order to test this, I designed and 3D printed a nozzle and bought an air pump and hooked it all up. And we're gonna test and see if that makes a difference. Okay, after engraving all of them, here's what we have. This one has no borax, no air assist. This one has no borax with air assist. This one has borax, no air assist, and this one has borax with air assist. So comparing the non-borax air assist versus non-air assist, I don't know that it made a huge difference in the non-borax. Let's look at the borax. As you can see, definitely darker. It's what the borax does. So this one again was the non-air assist, and this one had air assist on. Not seeing a ton of difference between the two, the non-air assist and the air assist. My concern is not that the engravings don't look good because these look great. My problem is that because it's basically soot, I don't want that coming off on somebody's food if I put it on a cutting board and then send it to him. I'm going to put mineral oil on here. We're going to let it soak in. Brand new towel again. This time, I'm not going to I'm not going to wipe it. I'm going to dab it to see how this goes. Brand new towel out of the box. Place it down on here. Huh. Not bad. I was expecting worse. So there's a little bit up here. So I definitely see traces of it here and there. You can actually sort of see the outline of it on the cloth. See this angle, you can actually quite see it quite well. Keep that one. I'm going to do another brand new cloth. I know this hurts me to waste this many cloths, but for science, or well, some vain attempt at science here. All right, same thing on this one. So this one, again, this was the borax with no air assist, and this one was borax with air assist. And up we go. And this one. Actually, more came off. That is interesting. I'm going to grab one more towel, and this time I am going to wipe it. Because imagining that I've been using my cutting board and I want to clean it up. So that's the big problem I have with the borax. It's not sealed in, and even with mineral oil, it comes right off. And I don't know about you, but I definitely would not want to put something on a cutting board and pull it off and see a bunch of black stuff. Also, a shout out to my friends from Germany who've chimed in and let me know that Borax isn't available in your country. So I didn't know that, and that's uh, actually interesting. So those of you that are from Germany who are watching this video, do me a favor, let me know in the comments below why, if you know why Borax is not allowed in Germany or isn't available. I don't know if it's that it's not allowed or it's just not available. So let me know down in the comments. I was also thinking about the solution, the Borax solution itself. I made a board basically that had from 10% to 100% of the borax solution that I use. The borax solution that I use is one teaspoon of borax to six ounces of water and mix it all in and make sure it dissolves. In order to test the borax solution, what I did is I weighed a teaspoon of borax and then I divided that by 10. And so then I just added that much every time so that I went from 10% solution up to 100%. I painted that across the board. I engraved a grayscale image across each spot and then I tested it. 10% on this side and 100% borax solution on this side. 10, 20, 30, a little light. 40 is okay. 50 is decent. 60 is starting to lose the divisions between the squares. But honestly, 70 through 100, not a huge difference in the color change here. So now the important test. And we're going to go down the line and we're going to wipe these and see how much soot we get off of them. All right, we're going to start at the 10%. So 10%. 
little bit, 20%, more, much more with a 30. So even with a lower borax solution, even with only 10%, which is not dark enough at all, we're getting soot smear. 40, 50, yep, quite a bit. 60, 70, 80, 90, and finally, 100. Even changing the borax solution does not affect it. In the previous video, I had some issues getting all my masking tape off when I was testing laser engraving through the masking tape, and someone left a suggestion to use duct tape to rip that off, so I tested that. So we're just gonna use some, this is some 3M duct tape here. Push it down on a name. Okay, a couple pieces came off. That's, that one doesn't wanna come off. That one's really in there. Nope. Doesn't want to come off. How about the big one? Let's see if we can. Okay. Worked fairly well for the larger piece. So it looks like for larger areas, the duct tape probably works fairly well. So thanks for the tip. Not directly related to the borax, but like I said, I'm trying to test all this, the suggestions that I've received. On another not quite borax related thing, uh, someone suggested using baking soda on, on an engraving. So that's what I did here in this test. I used some baking soda. Someone suggested it, so I wanted to give it a try. And you can see here that, well, it, it makes some kind of difference, but not quite as much as the borax does. And it still wipes off a little bit, but not as much. If you have been using baking soda for engraving set of borax and you have some suggestions on how to, to do that, let me know. I'd love to test that out. After my last video about borax, someone emailed me and said, hey, the borax works different on a CO2 laser versus on a diode laser. And that is true. A CO2 laser has a much bigger wavelength. Uh, diode lasers are about 405 to 420 nanometers. And a CO2 laser is like a little over 10,000 nanometers. So it has a much bigger wavelength than the diode laser does. It's one of the reasons why we can cut clear acrylic on a CO2, but not on a diode laser. I don't have a CO2 laser here to test, but my local makerspace does. So I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend, Kevin. He came over and helped me out one afternoon. We uh, setting up the, the CO2 lasers because he has way more experience running those than I do. We ran a test at 300 millimeters per second. So again, the CO2 laser is faster. So it's per second, not per minute, like it is with diodes. And I think we ran it at about 10% because that is the lowest I could turn the CO2 laser down to before the beam just wouldn't come on at all. So about 10 watts, basically. We got an engraving with that. It worked well. And then I tried to replicate the settings of my diode laser as much as possible. Basically, the 10 watts on the CO2 is about three times more powerful than my diode laser that I was running for the tests. I did the math and we ran the, the CO2 laser at 100, I believe this was 150 millimeters per second, three times faster than I was running my diode laser. So in theory, it's about the same. And as you can see, the same result. It smears. It didn't make any difference whatsoever. Now, about a week later, I was thinking about it. I said, you know what I should do though, because I didn't test this, is I want to go back and I want to run the machine as fast as possible at the lowest possible level. Because one of the comments I got was either reduce the laser power or increase your speed when you're using borax. So I thought, okay, let's see if I can run the machine as fast as possible at the lowest setting and if that makes a difference. So in the final test here, we're running the machine at 500 millimeters a second, which is the fastest it will possibly go. And at only 10%, which is the lowest we can turn the laser down. And you can see it didn't make a difference. So from my testing, there is no difference between a CO2 laser and a diode laser with the borax. But what about this? Because at the beginning of the video, you saw me wipe this off with no soot. Well, the secret is, I clear coated this before I wiped it, which is something I said in my previous video. The only way for the borax to work is you have to seal it in because it's basically just making soot. And I think a lot of people missed that. I think a lot of people thought that I wasn't using borax because it wasn't turning out well. Uh, and that, that wasn't the case. It's because it makes soot. And I'm trying to do it on cutting boards and I can't seal it in. So that's why I'm not using borax. It's not because it doesn't work. It does, but you have to seal it in. However, if you look really closely, you may be able to just see that there is actually still a little bit of soot coming off, wiping this with a paper towel, with a wet paper towel. Even with three coats of clear coat on this, some of the soot still comes off. So based on my tests, what I found is that the borax creates soot. It's not actually making the wood darker. I don't think that there is a way to make the wood darker with borax 
that isn't just soot that wipes right off. Okay, and that's, that's my opinion from my testing. Those of you that have been using Borax, if you can let me know in the comments the exact settings you're using, the mixture, how you're applying it, all those things, and it's creating a darker burn on the wood and it does not wipe right off, let me know because I would love to try that. I really don't think there is a way to get the Borax to make the wood darker that isn't just a bunch of soot, basically. If you haven't seen the video I've referenced several times in this video about the cutting board, you can check that out up here. And if lasering isn't really your thing, I do other stuff on the channel besides lasers. You can check out a video over here.